Ow. 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 I praise him in the morning. I praise him at night. I praise him in the noon. I'ma praise him with my life. Lord. 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 The name of our lesson is the remnant of Zion. This Shabbat's lesson will help give understanding to all those that seek truth. As the end of this age draws to a close and the world is about to be shaken to its foundation, when world war breaks out, the collapse of the international financial markets take place. Tsunamis like the one we witnessed strike Japan are brought forth everywhere at the command of the Most High, along with devastating earthquakes and deadly tornadoes. When all this comes, it's important that the remnant of Zion know that the word of Yaqua is true. And no matter what happens, he shall keep all of his promises. The Most High has promised to preserve a remnant of his chosen people in the last days. And some of us today are the living and breathing fulfillment of that prophecy. Let's go to the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Chapter 37, starting with verse 1. With all your getting, get you understanding. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, starting with verse 1, we read, The hand of Yaqua was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of Yah and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Yaqua Elohim, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of Yaqua. Thus saith Yaqua Elohim unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am your qua. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise. And behold, a shaking, 
and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith your quarrel he, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off by our parts. Because of our captivity, after being thrown head first out of the Holy Land for our forefathers' disobedience, century after century after century, being sojourners in the earth, Captives unto the heathen on them plantations in Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, and Georgia. It was kind of hard for them dry bones. Some thought their hope was lost. Some felt we was cut off to the end. But we wasn't continuing. Verse 12. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith your quarrel, O he, Behold, O my people, I will open up your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am your choir when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. I shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, your choir, have spoken it, and performed it, saith the Most High. The word of Yah came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick, and write upon it for Judah. That's us. The sons and daughters of slaves in the United Snakes of America. If there's any of y'all up in this room that understands that, put a seven up in her. For we are the most favored tribe. We are the standard bearers. We produce the LeBron James, the Kevin Durant's, the Dwayne Wade's. We produce the world's greatest athletes and singers and musicians, and doctors, and lawyers. For indeed, according to Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter, we are above all people upon the face of the earth. If you understand that, put a 77 up in her. Not according to me, not according to you. According to the holy word of the Most High Yah. And we demonstrated on the world stage on a daily basis. Toda. Again we read verse 16. This is what the Most High told our brother Zeke to do. The prophet Ezekiel. Moreover thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah. 
and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions, and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of our people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus saith your choir, O him, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before thy eyes. And say unto them, Thus saith Yaqua Elohim, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, wherever they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. The Hebrews in Central, North, and South America, the Hebrews in Europe, the Hebrews scattered throughout the diaspora, and Africa, and Asia, and everywhere on the planet. This applies. Continuing. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. And there shall be no more two nations. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places, wherein they have sinned, and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, and I will be their Elohim. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them Forevermore. Do y'all understand the hatred of the heathen for you now, Zion? For they are jealous and they are envious that of all the nations upon the earth, the Most High will only establish this covenant with the children of Israel, his servants. If you truly understand that, this Shabbat put a hundred up in this room. For well, this is why the Klan and the white supremacists want to encamp you, put you in concentration camps, want to kill you, want to put you back in bondage. This is why the racist Republicans want to take the knives to you and cut you to the quick. This is why all the nations of the planet look at us with disdain. The Chinese come into our communities down here in the ghetto and sell us rat fried and cat fried rice. Abominations before the Most High. 
while cursing us under their breath while we make them millionaires. Them sloped head Moabites and Ammonites come over here selling hair, facial products, put all the black businesses out of business. And they up in there talking, they, who many went up and down? Watch that black nigger he's stealing. Cursing us every moment you up in there. But smiling and taking your money while we make them millionaires. These heathens know who you are, Zion. Continuing. Verse 27. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yeah, I will be their heir, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, Yahweh, do sanctify Israel. When my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Indeed, it shall be the remnant of the chosen people of the Most High Yah that he shall return as promised back to the promised land to receive our inheritance that was promised to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by the true and living Elohim. For you to truly understand what the remnant is, you need to know the definition of remnant. The definition of remnant, a usually small part, member, or trace remaining, or be a small surviving group. Now let's see how that applies to the tribe of Judah here in America. Right now, this very day, there are over 40 million sons and daughters of the Hebrew slaves who remain alive in America. 95% identify themselves as a Christian, be they Baptist, Catholic, Protestant, Jehovah Witnesses, or any other other man-made religious sects under the um umbrella of Christianity. Now less than 1% or Muslim, less than 1%, or Buddhist, or some other man-made religion, and less than 1% are atheist nuts who believe there is no supreme Elohim. So what that means, you Israelites, is right now in America, there is less than 1% of the sons and daughters of slaves here in America who know their true heritage and know and practice that which we are commanded to do by the Most High Yah. If there's anybody in this room that understood the numbers that I just gave, Put an eight up in this row. That's the total breakdown of the tribe of Yehuda here in America. Toda. So if you truly realize how small of a number that is, out of the 40 million of us left alive in America, then you can begin to understand how the exact definition of remnant 
applies to the tribe of Judah here in America. Now, take that a step further. Out of that 40 million, it's less than 1% of us who know we Hebrew Israelites. Know we direct descendants out the tribe of Yehuda. So even out of that small number, take it a step further. When you eliminate the non-Messianic maniacs who talk about the Redeemer bad. Who going to come up terribly short for all the idle words that came forth out of their mouth burning bread on them. The number shrinks, does it not? And that's amongst the 1% of us who know we Hebrews. Continue. Eliminate the wicked Hebrews, like Peter Moses, who kill four-year-old babies and blow their brains out. Him and his five wives down there in North Carolina. Some of these Negroes working with the spirit of Hashatan, but are put on some fringes, will dare utter the name of the Most High Yah and commit acts of abomination and outright wickedness and evil, that it'll make a Satanist flinch. Eliminate these Negroes. The number gets smaller, does it not? Continue. Eliminate those who intentionally mess over the daughters of Zion. You know, the Most High is moved by the tears of the daughters of Zion. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I profess to y'all the heavy burdens through captivity, through what we're going through today, it weighs heavy upon the shoulders of the men of Israel. And we're going to be held accountable for the errors of our ways. The flat foots, schemers, and slicksters who whisper things to sisters and be gone like a vapor. Use them and abuse them, make merchandise out of them. Then they kick the can on down the road. Eliminate. All of them who know they're Hebrews, the number even gets smaller. Eliminate those who teach the children of Israel to break the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. These Hebrew lights who teach you to don't keep the Shabbat. Don't keep pace socks. You can go on and nibble on that bacon. It's all right. What Negro running around there calling himself a Hebrew still eating swine? That Negro Jermaine Grant on swole running around there calling himself the comforter. That Negro so swole up around the jaws and Chen region is pathetic. Not a word on the street. He loved him some swine. He done found him a loophole up in Leviticus where he can lick fingers and gobble it up. Is it any wonder he turned it into TV snakes? Another notorious pig meat eater? Eliminate these Negroes who got Hebrews bowing the knee to him calling them the Messiah and Holy Father. Negroes placing titles upon their own names. 
Negro want to be a prophet. But can't give me one of them Powerball or Mega Million numbers. Eliminate these Negroes who want to be reincarnated into Levitical priests. They stuck on stupid on the order of iron. They don't know the priest had to go get a job. When Yeshua became Yah sacrifice. Negroes all my name, Levi Ben Cohen, Ben Israel, formerly Leroy Jenkins. Ain't you Leroy from around the corner, Miss Mamie's child? You used to steal hubcaps when you was... Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. But I don't do that no more. I'm Yaqub Levi Ben Cohen Ben Israel. Leroy, go over there and sit down. Yes, ma'am. Know the character of this Negro. Eliminate all these Negroes. Do not the numbers go down, even amongst us Hebrews. If anybody in this room could understand what I just said, even know how I said it, put a five up in her if you got it. Eliminate all of the above. And the numbers within the 1% of us who know that we're Hebrews collapses a little bit more on it. Torah. So for the small surviving group, remember the definition of rem remnant. For the small surviving group, the remnant, this is what the Most High says concerning you. Let's go to the book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 16. In Isaiah. Chapter 11, verses 1 through 16, we read. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of your choir shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Most High Yah. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of Yah. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. See, you non-messianic maniacs, y'all don't understand. This speaks of Yahushua HaMashiach, the Lamb of Yaqua. And it's going to be some trouble when y'all come before him. Be prepared. Continuing. Verse 5. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. And for you Hebrews teaching that preterism, that all this that took place 2,000 years ago, well, I would suggest to you that if you went to your local zoo, and you threw a lamb over there in the lion's den, you're going to see a lamb get his belly toe open and plenty of wild growling and claw action. If you took a little calf and ran it over there past a leopard, a little newborn, oh, it's so innocent, you will see that thing get its throat torn out and guts eaten while it's still mule kicking. And that tells me with just common sense, that ain't happened yet on this earth. 
If there's anybody in this room that agrees with me, uh, this ain't happened yet on this earth, and we can demonstrate it at any local zoo. Put a one up in here if y'all understood what I just said. That little fact alone knocks uh, Nero Caesar and all them clean out the box. Let's kick them back over in the dusty pages of history where they belong. And be go be aware what's happening right now today as it applies to the remnant of Israel. Continuing. Verse 6 again. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. And the leopard shall lie down with the kid. And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed. The young one shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the serpent's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. What? No more death, no more pain? Hallelujah! For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of Yahweh, as the waters cover the sea. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign, a signal of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day. The Yaqua shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nation. And shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. And gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart. And the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah. All that jealousy and envy coming to an end. Like you had Hebrews hating on LeBron James trying to win the title. I don't like LeBron. Why? Well, I don't know. I just don't like him. He left Cleveland. He, no, he, he went on and left them. Well, if somebody offered you a job for a uh, thousand dollars extra a week, how quick would you be leaving them? Why you hating on LeBron? Hebrews can find any reason whatsoever to hate and have envy and jealousy for one another. But all that's coming to an end. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart. And the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. We want all the gold chains. We want all the escalades. We lifting and moving like our forefathers did coming up out of Egypt. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab. I can't wait to turn the pockets off some Edomites. All kind of money going to be falling out. Diamonds and rubies and pearls. Turn their collars off. They like to hide them, stitch them into the collars. They going to get handled. The Mobites too. Running down her selling that cat fried and rat fried rice to us. Y'all come from all the way on the other side of the world to do that to us. We going to get you. I'm telling you right now, we going to get you. And the children of Ammon shall obey them. Better not be no back talking. 
And your choir shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it in the seven streams, and make men go over dry side. The Most High will make the way home. And there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria. Like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Now we bear witness that in this hour, that even though the majority of the tribe of Judah in America, the so-called Negro, Black, Afro-American, African-American, or any of other proverbs and bywords by which they call us. Even though the majority of us don't know, don't accept, or flat out reject that we are indeed direct descendants of the children of Israel. Straight out of the pages of the Holy Bible. Even though that's the reality of this hour. We are beginning to see more and more Gentile heathens. Publicly confessing that indeed they know we are Yah's chosen people. And even acknowledging. That Yahushua is black all over YouTube. You see everything from white heathen women to Ishmaelite men confessing these truths. Any of y'all ever seen that white woman was scared to death came on YouTube? Confess who we was. Or seen this Palestinian getting into a war. Words with the Edomites. Flat out telling the whole world. That indeed, we Zion. For they know ye sons and daughters of Israel. Shalom, shalom to you. You're listening to Rabbi Shimon Altaf, your host for program In Search of the Hebrews. Now today we're going to talk about Melech Yehoshua, who is termed as Jesus of Nazareth in the Western world, which is an incorrect title for him, because that is not his name. Now we want to talk about whether he's black or white, whether the real chosen people of God were black or Caucasian looking or some other color. Take note that we expose the fraud that is, that is created by the Western powers, including the so-called Christian clergy, backed by the Roman Catholics who started this whole thing, who knew who the true people of God were. They knew they were black, but they hid it from you. They had pictures of Miriam, the mother of Yehoshua, in black, but they hid it from your view. So all you see is white pictures now, with a white baby. These are all false lies. You want to remove those lies from you. And I also want to point out that when you keep running back to your pastor to ask him about your true origin, your Caucasian looking pastor who doesn't know nothing better because he's been also brainwashed by his clergy, by his ac academy so called, that he teaches you that, that you know, oh no, you know, yes they might have been dark, but maybe they were not dark, maybe they were just you know, tanned or something like that. No, Israel was very black, black as coal. We did have people of, of, of lighter shades too. Not that we didn't have people of lighter shades. A majority of people were black. Okay, So the, the last people that you want to trust are your slave masters. Don't tell me that Christianity has been a friendly religion all these years. Christianity helped to enslave our people in Africa. If, Christ, if Christianity had any sense, why would they join with the slave masters? Why would so-called pastors of Methodism and of Baptism 
you know, Baptist theologies, pastors, why would they keep slaves in the ancient times and beat them up, black slaves who were true Israelites, and then they would go and preach a sermon of love. See, that's the kind of people that you are trusting today. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't waste my time with them. Why? Because you don't want to be with the whoring church. You want to be with Master Yahweh. You want to be with Yahushua, the Messiah, the one who is sent by Abi Yahweh. And if you're not with him, and if you're with your church, so-called whoring, prostituting church, celebrating Christmas, Easter, and other things, you're wasting time. You're wasting your life. You're, going to, you're, not, you're not even going to enter the kingdom. So be careful about where you, where you go. These are some of the same heathens who will perform Yah's will in your sight, O house of Yisrael. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 49, verses 22. Through 26. Let's verify this spiritual fact, this Shabbat, in the Holy Word of the Most High. In Isaiah the 49th chapter, verses 22 to 26, we read, Thus saith Yaquah Elohim, Behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people and they shall bring thy sons in their arms and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders and kings shall be thy nursing fathers and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet and thou shalt know that I am your qua, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered we have been these heathens prey and captives for 2,000 years. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Can it be done? Are the lawful captive delivered? We were lawfully captives because of the disobedience of our forefathers by breaking the most high laws. That's why we were placed in the captivity. We were lawful captives. But this is what the Most High says. Verse 25. But thus saith Yaqua, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. You mean, Most High, this heathen which is beat and raped and killed and tortured and worked us to death, built world riches, spit in our faces, made us as animals. They contended with us. you going to contend with them and you going to save our children? Absolutely correct. Verse 26, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. You hear that, you heathens, down there in Langley, Virginia? We ain't scared of y'all. And they shall be drunken 
with their own blood, as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, Yaquah, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Yaqob. Hallelujah! Now the Most High instructs the remnant to hearken unto him, to listen unto him. As we hit on week in and week out in our Shabbat lessons, let us listen to the word of the Most High Yah and do that which he commands. The Most High instructs the remnant to hearken unto Him. And then He will bear us, bear with us, put up with us, and carry us, and deliver us. Let's go to Isaiah the prophet, chapter 46, verses 3 through 4. Let's rightfully divide the word of the Most High Yah, this Shabbat, that his word might go forth to the four corners of the earth with understanding. In Isaiah chapter 46, verses 3 and 4, we read, Hearken unto me, O house of your coal. And all the remnant of the house of Israel. This ain't just the remnant of Judah here in America. This is the remnant of the other 11 tribes. This is the remnant of the whole house of Israel. That means a small portion out of the tribe of Dan, out of Ethiopia. A small portion from them tribes still scattered throughout Africa. A small portion to the tribe scattered to the four corners of the earth. If there's anybody that understands that, put a nine up in her. We ain't just talking about the tribe of Judah from America, which oftentimes I find even some of my learned brothers and sisters forgetting about their little brothers. Remember, we was the fourth son. We ain't even forgetting about our big brothers. That's why we was vexing Ephraim, because we was more natural athletes than them. We ran fast and jumped high. You know, we had the Billy D's and we had the uh, Denzel's and, you know, a couple of them had a, you know, lump on the side of the head. We're like, man, you look like you a hammer. Get over there with them Canaanites. You know how we joke one another in the playgrounds and play the dozens and whatnot. You know, we was the best of that, too, and we vexed our brethren. And they was mad at Judah, and, you know, kind of a little jealous. Because, you know, they had a couple of Negroes looking like Yafit Koto down there in Dan. we like, man, he ain't come from our fathers. Where did that Edie, I mean, look at Negro come from? Who was that Hamite? The brother like, man, I ain't no Hamite, man. I ain't Judah, man. I'm tired of you messing with me, man. <laughs> Can't you see our forefathers? And you're like, no, no, I'm Hebrew, sit down. I'm just playing. But deep down, we wasn't playing. You know how we is. With them little old words on your head. I bet you stingy as hell, ain't you? Yop it. All right, man, keep on talking. Keep on talking. And the devil kicked back in the cut looking at all of this foolishness. He's like, uh huh, I know how to get I know how to divide and conquer these niggas as soon as I get the opportunity. And here we is two thousand years later. When it's time for Judah to grow up, because our brethren is looking at us. We front and center in this matter. All throughout this manuscript. Remember, the Messiah came from our tribe. He's known as the lion of the tribe of Yehuda. And you ignorant Hebrews stuck on stupid under the order of Aaron wanting to be Levitical priests and non-Messianic maniacs 
Our Messiah didn't come out the tribe of Levi. Partner. And it's going to be some trouble when y'all meet him. Because there's one thing about Judah you talk about is bad. Uh, <laughs> who? It might be some trouble. Y'all get worried somebody talking about y'all bad and y'all finally meet them. Don't you cut eyes at them? You be looking under eye like, oh, what you gonna say? Nah, I wish this, I wish he would say something. Nah, I'm ready to bust his. <laughs> we know how we is. Think back in your youth before you found the most high. Some of you women would fight, the fight and jump off quicker with y'all than with the men's. There you go, pulling your heart out. Uh -huh, I'm just waiting on her to say one word. She ain't even got to say nothing. Just let her look at me sideways. <laughs> there go Judah again. There go Judah. Front and center. <laughs> Whoo. Make me lose my spot. These truths cannot be denied from one end of this planet to the other. It don't apply to no people on this earth but us. Because we are the ones who live it and breathe it. Again, Isaiah chapter 46, verses 3 and 4, we read. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. And even to your old age I am he, and even to whore hers, and some gray hairs, will I carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and will deliver you. The Most High say he will carry, he will bear, and he will deliver the remnant of the house of Israel. Because of the disobedience of our ancestors. This the Most High cast us out of his sight and caused us to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Yet in the end, my friend, for the remnant, even in the time of evil, the mark of the beast is almost upon us. Mr. 666 is here. Even in the time of affliction, there'll be Israelites being handled by the enemy, given over to the hands of the enemy. Even in the time of evil and in the time of affliction, Shall the Most High cause our enemies to treat the remnant well? Think about that. Will you have some kind of glow on you that'll make even your enemies look at you and say, No, we can't now. Don't even look at him. You'll die. Anything they won't give it to him. Think about that. Even in the time of evil and in the time of affliction shall the Most High cause even our enemies to treat the remnant well. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 15. Let's verify this prophecy on this night of prophecy. Jeremiah chapter 15 verses 1 through 11. Don't believe, Brother Jacob. Let's do a little study. Let's show ourselves approved before the Most High Yah. As we ask him to sit at the head of the table, as we sup upon his word, this Shabbat, as we feast upon the word of the Most High, 
as we eat his prophecies like sweet tasting bread and drink down understanding like pomegranate wine. Watch yourself, Smanu Yah. We in Jeremiah chapter 15, verses 1 through 11, we read, Then said Yaquan to me, this is what the Most I said to Prophet Jeremiah, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, Yet my mind could not be toward this people. The Most High was mad at us. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. And it shall come to pass. If they say unto thee, Whether shall we go forth? Then thou shalt tell them, Thus saith the Most High, Such as are for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword, and such as for the famine to the famine, and such as are for the captivity to the captivity. And I want to point over them four times, saith the most, the sword to slay, and the dogs to tear and the fowls of the heaven, and the beast of the earth, to devour and destroy. And I will cause them to be removed unto all kingdoms of the earth, because of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, king of Judah, for that which he did in Jerusalem. He committed such a wicked evil act that Yah threw us head first out of the land, caused us to be captives in the four corners of the earth where we were slayed and torn by dogs and the fowls of heaven and the beasts of the earth and they devoured us. Verse 5, For who shall have pity upon thee, O Jerusalem? Or who shall bemoan thee? Or who shall go aside to ask how thou doest? Thou hast forsaken me, saith Yah. Thou art gone backward. Therefore will I stretch out my hand against thee and destroy thee. I am weary with repenting, and I will fan them with the fan in the gates of the land. I will bereave them of children. I will destroy my people since they return not from their ways. Their widows are increased to me above the sands of the sea. I have brought Upon them against the mother of the young men a spoiler at noonday. I have caused him to fall upon it suddenly and terrors upon the city. The murder rates have skyrocketed. They had 84 shootings in one weekend in Chicago. 20 something dead. They killing her in a STL like it's going out of style. These terrors are upon the city. And death falls suddenly upon the sons of these mothers. Verse 9. She that hath borne seven languishes, she hath given up the ghost. Her son is gone down while it was yet day. She hath been ashamed and confounded. These young out of control Hebrew boys and young men is out of control, ain't listening to elders, ain't listening to their mamas, and they heaping shame upon their mothers. 
Let the angels of bear witness. Angels of heaven bear witness. That this is taking place even in this hour. And the residue of them will I deliver to the sword before their enemies, saith Yaquah. Woe is me, my mother, that thou hast borne me a man of strife and a man of contention to the whole earth. They portray us as the wildest man on the planet. The niggas in the ghettos of America. You better watch out. Don't go out there at night. The niggas out there. King Lao, King Lao, King Lao. In every language they say the same thing. Watch them, they on one right there. They pull them purse straps tight. The little Chinaman woman. Y'all be looking like a woman. I don't want your purse. You sloped head, mobite, cat fried rice eating. You better, whoo. See, when you know you are, it's hard to tolerate these Gentile heathens. And see, I know a few of their words. One time I was up in the, Get some spray from my uh, dress and Chinese woman Ching Long Chu Chao Lu. Then the man he Chao Li Wu Chao, and I answered Ming Yao Hu Lang Hang. They told me your stuff free, your stuff free. Leave now, leave now. <laughs> Cause I pulled up a pistol and said Mu Lao Chao Ching Lao Hu Now. Now, I didn't know what that meant, but obviously, they got the interpretation thereof. <laughs> Whew. You Hebrews, crazy as all get out. Y'all have made me lose my spot again. <laughs> I'm telling you, I can't handle these heathens and the way they try to play us. But there are certain of us that they look upon and they know, oh, yes, God is with them. That one right there, don't even look at them. I'm here to tell y'all, they got to pay for all that they've done. Again, verse 10, woe is me, my mother, that thou was born me a man of strife and a man of contention to the whole earth. I have neither lent on earthry, nor men have lent to me on earthry. Yet every one of them doth curse me. Why do all these heathens curse me? All of them. You quite said, just what the most I told this woman who been mourning for a child. Verily, it shall be well with thy remnant. Verily, I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in the time of evil and in the time of affliction. Post that again for me, Aki, verse 11. Let me read that again. This is what the Most High said. Yaqua said, Verily, it shall be well with thy remnant. Verily, I will cause the enemy to entreat the well in the time of evil and in a time of affliction. The Most High is going to put a thought in certain of these heathens' minds, especially the ones who are coming out and publicly telling the world who we are. That it's their natural born duty. If they don't want to pour gasoline drawers on and have to swim a couple of laps in a lake of fire, to look out for the remnant of his people, even in the time of evil and in the time of affliction. If there's anybody in this room that understood this Jeremiah chapter 15 that we just read, put a five up in this room. For it's true, Yisrael. For indeed, the Most High will gather the remnant of the house of Yisrael from all countries and bring us back to our own land. 
Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 1 through 8. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verses 1 through 8, we read, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith your choir. That's you cash flow dollar. You up to these snakes. Eddie Thong. Stop switching across the room. Snapping cell phone camera pictures. In them shadows. We see you with them muscle shirts on. That cloth all up your rear end. With them high heels on. This y'all. Woe be unto the pastors. That destroy and scatter the sheep of my past. Saith Yah. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith Yah. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, wherever I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking. Saith your choir, behold, the days come, saith your choir, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called. Yaquah our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Most High, that they shall no more say, Yaquah liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But Yaquah liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country. And from all countries, wherever I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Hallelujah! As it is written, the Most High has raised up seed in Israel who cry out unto him to save his people and ain't scared to shout it and publish it all over the world as we do this Shabbat. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 1 through 12. In Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 1 through 12, we read, At the same time, saith Yah, Will I be the Elohim of all the families of Israel? And they shall be my people. Thus saith Yah. The people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness. Even Israel, 
when I went to cause him to rest. Yah have appeared of old unto me, saying, Yeah, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again I will build thee, and thou shalt be built. O virgin of Yisrael, thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets, and shall go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. The planter shall plant and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion, unto Yaquah, our Elohim. For thus saith Yaquah, sing with gladness for Jacob. We got some singers, don't we, y'all? We got some singers up in this room who I put on the top shelf what all that Judah can put out there that the world knows of. Who can sing to the Most High better than His chosen people? Do you see why we're the best singers on the planet? Even our deceived brothers and sisters who sing gospel from the heart. The reason they can hit the notes that they can and can hit, hit the spiritual levels that they can is because they are the children of Israel. Oftentimes they do it in plum ignorance. Imagine how on fire they're going to be when they learn who they are. Let me read that again. For thus saith Yaquah, sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations. Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Yaquah, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. I keep post that verse for me. We in Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 1 through 12. Start with verse 7 again, Ak. In verse 7 we read, For thus saith Yaquah, Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations, Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Yah, save thy people, the remnant of Yisrael. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth and with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her that travaileth with child together. A great company shall return thither. They shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lead them. There will be tears of Joy flowing, praising the Most High, thanking Yah. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of your choir, O ye nations. And declare in the aisles afar off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him, and keep him, as a shepherd doth his flock. For Yaqua hath redeemed Jacob, and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, 
and shall flow together to the goodness of the Most High. For wheat and for wine and for all and for the young of the flock and of the herd and their soul shall be as a watered garden and they shall not sorrow any more at all. Hallelujah! The remnant of Jacob will be in the midst of the Gentiles as we are this day. Judah in the midst of the heathens and North America. We got Hebrews scattered through South America. Hebrew tribes throughout Hamiteville over there in Africa. Got Hebrews scattered to the four corners. The prophecies are true. The remnant of your cold will be in the midst of the Gentiles. And ain't going to be scared for the days that are ahead. But you'll be like young lions. When the perilous time comes. Let's go to the book of the prophet Micah. Micah chapter 5. Verses 7 through 15. I want the Freddy cats amongst my brethren to read this with understanding. This Shabbat. And let you wax bold in your spirit. And faith of the Most High Yah. In the book of Micah, chapter 7, or excuse me, chapter 5, verses 7 through 15, we read. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people as a dew from Yah, as the showers Upon the grass that tarrieth not for man, nor waiteth for the sons of men. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people, as a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if they go through, both treadeth down and turneth in pieces, and none can deliver. With the most high with us, who can be against us? We ain't scared. Thine hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries, and all thine enemies shall be cut off. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yah, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots, and I will cut off the cities of thy land, and throw down all thy strongholds, and I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Thy graven images also will I cut off, and thy standing images out of the midst of thee, and thou shalt no more worship the work of thine hands. And I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee, so will I destroy thy cities. And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. Hallelujah! I don't serve no Pitifully weak Elohim. I serve the terrible Elohim. Who came to bring the pain. If there's anybody that agree with me, put a hundred up in her. They try to make the most high out to be some kind of chump. He say he going to pour out angry 
anger and fury upon a heathen like they ain't never heard. That's the Elohim who I serve. I'm here to tell you, Zion, our forefathers messed up. We was cast into the pits of captivity for our forefathers' disobedience. Our brothers and sisters who remain alive remain defied and disobedient to the Most High to this hour. It's less than 1% of Yehuda in America who even acknowledge the Most High being who he is. They keep those pictures of white Jesus up in their churches and homes. Them very idols and standing statues that the Most High done told a heathen, he going who is going to be toe up from the flow up? But the Most High will not be angry with his chosen people forever. He will pardon the iniquity. He will have compassion on the remnant of his heritage. Let's go to Micah chapter 7, verses 18 through 20. Micah chapter 7, verses 18 through 20 we read. Who is a Elohim like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? Thank you for giving us, Yah, for forgiving us, Yah. Toda Abba. He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities, and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Thou will perform the truth to Jacob, and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. The Most High will deal with the synagogue of Satan. Them Khazar converts, European so-called Jews, who inhabit the land of promise. That was promised unto the children of Israel. And y'all going to deal with the Palestinians and all the other inhabitants of our land. And the Most High has even told the remnant of the house of Judah, well, we shall dwell in the land. Let's go to the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In Zephaniah, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, we read, Gather yourselves together, yeah, gather together, O nation not desired. Called us niggas, didn't you? Said we was the lowest of the low, didn't you? Verse 2. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the first anger of your choir come upon you, before the day of Yah's anger come upon you, seek ye your choir, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. It may be you shall be hid in the day of Yah's anger. Uh-oh. 
for Gaza shall be forsaken. You hear that, you Palestinian dog faces down there in the Gaza Strip? Y'all got to go. And Ashkelon, a desolation. Them apartment complexes. The industrializing of Ashkelon is for you, Yehuda. They shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday. And Ekron shall be rooted up. Woe unto the inhabitants of the sea coast, the nation of the Keratites. The word of Yah is against you, O Canaan, the land of the Philistines. Yeah, you Palestinians. I will even destroy thee, that there shall not, that there shall be no inhabitant. No inhabitant. And the sea coast shall be dwellings and cottages for shepherds and foes for flocks. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. They shall feed thereupon. In the houses of Ashkelon shall they lay down in the evening. For Yaqua, their Elohim, shall visit them and turn away their captivity. The Most High has even given us, has even given us a glimpse of the soon to come holy city of Jerusalem. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 8. Verses 1 through 17. It won't be the Jerusalem we see today with Edomites holding gay pride parades in it. It won't be the wickedness that's going on down in Hell Aviv, as Aki Shallow call it. Not Tel Aviv, but Hell Aviv. All the Russian whores walking around half naked doing things in the alleys of Hell Aviv. And them wild, cornal, Sodom and Gomorrah lust being unleashed on the streets of Hell Aviv. Ah, uh ah. -uh. The Most High gives us a glimpse of the holy city of Jerusalem to come in the book of Zechariah, chapter 8, starting with verse 1, we read. Again the word of your choir of hosts came to me, saying, Thus saith your choir of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I was jealous for her with great fury, Thus saith Yaquah, I am returned unto Zion. That's right, heathen, the most high threw us into slavery. It wasn't by you pink booty heathen's power that we became y'all captives. It was direct punishment for us and our forefathers' disobedience. And the most high got jealous by your treatment that you did upon us. Because you went too far. You human hyenas! You wild and wicked beasts! You went too far! And you got to pay. As our brother James Brown put pen to paper, the big payback! Make me lose my spot. I'm waxing hot, this Shabbat. Trembling over her. Ready to vigorously massage some heathen's throats. Get some correction around this planet. Verse 3. Thus saith Yaqua, I am returned unto Zion, and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, 
And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth. And the mountain of Yah hosts the holy mountain. Thus saith your choir of hosts. There shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem. And every man with his staff in his hand for very age. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Thus saith your choir of hosts, If it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, should it also be marvelous in my eyes, saith your choir of hosts? Thus saith your choir of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country and I will bring them and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem and they shall be my people and I will be their Elohim in truth and in righteousness. Thus saith your choir of hosts, let your hands be strong. Ye that hear in these days these words by the mouth of the prophets, which were the day that the foundation of the house of your choir of hosts was laid, that the temple might be built. For before these days there was no hire for man, nor any hire for beast. Neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. For I sent all men, every one against his neighbor. But now I will not be unto the residue of this people as in the former days, saith your choir of hosts. For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit. And the ground shall give her increase. And the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. And it shall come to pass that as you were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you. And you shall be a blessing. Fear not. But let your hands be strong. For thus saith your choir of hosts. As I thought to punish you. When your fathers provoked me to wrath. Saith your choir of hosts. And I repented not. So again. Have I thought in these days. To do well unto Jerusalem. And to the house of Yehuda. Fear ye not. These are the things that you shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. And love no false oath. For all these are things that I hate, saith Yaqua. How are you going to get around that Zion? There is no getting around it. Not in this world. Not in the world to come. For indeed, Yah will perform all that he has promised unto the remnant of his people, the remnant of Zion. So as we have clearly seen in this lesson, this Shabbat, the remnant of Zion will be the first fruit of the inheritance of the promises 
the Most High has made to his servants, our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yah will keep his word and will perform and do all that he said that he would for the remnant of Zion. So let us continue to publish it and blow the trumpet in Zion and ask the Most High Yah to save His people. Hallelujah! That's our lesson. The remnant of Zion. Your brother Jacob hopes that it was well received and was good for understanding this Shabbat. Let your hands be strong, you young lions of Yehuda. It's time for us to step up our spiritual game. For this is that seed that the Most High has raised for this purpose and this hour. I invite you to come on with me. Step up. Let's represent the fourth tribe as our forefathers would expect us to. As the Most High put us in our mother's womb to perform. For we don't serve our absent Elohim. Our Elohim that takes naps and takes breaks. You know, he ain't up on the throne. He don't, he's taking a nap. Nah. We serve the supreme Elohim. The true and living Elohim. And as sure as he put it on my heart, to bring forth this lesson, this Shabbat, that it might go forth to the four corners of the earth and to publish it and put it out there that even our enemies might see that them days that they was afraid of is at hand. For when the tsunami hitting Japan and San Francisco and New York and Florida and Louisiana at the same time. And a worldwide earthquake taking place. And tornadoes start falling out of a clear blue sky. The young lions of Yehuda ain't going to be scared. They're going to execute the purpose that the Most High has already laid the foundation thereof. Do any of y'all understand what I'm saying? Put a seven up in here. Torah. For we are in that hour. And the time is at hand. Again, that's our lesson. The remnant of Zion. And I pray that you got understanding this Shabbat. And truly realize how blessed you are to be a part of that remnant. Ye sons and daughters of Israel scattered to the four corners of the earth that heard my voice. Give praise unto your Elohim. Sing unto your Elohim. Thank your Elohim. Oh, my God.